Hello and welcome to episode 12 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. And Aaron. So we have Aaron sitting in with us today. Uh, Nick Jones could not make it. He's too busy camping with the family. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with that? Probably camping time for the family, so... Kind of gay. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he's being a good father. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure uh, he's having fun and hope he's not getting sunburnt. Mm. Or bitten by any rattlesnake. Or a spider, spider, spider. <laughs> does Nick have arachnophobia? He does. So he's like deathly afraid of spiders? Yeah. One time when we went camping, uh, actually the only time we all went camping, uh, we were all sitting by the campfire and he's like, well, I'm going to go turn in for the night. I said, all right. So about 45 minutes later, I walk back to the tent. I saw a flashlight on. I was like, oh, he's not like touching himself in there. <laughs> so, Would you need a flashlight to do that? Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe he's looking at a magazine. Oh, uh, uh, good point. He so, likes to watch some naked maidens. <laughs> <laughs> the maidens. So uh, <laughs> I go in. I'm like, Nick? And he's like in the corner of the tent with a shoe in one hand and a flashlight in the <laughs> other saying, I saw a spider. <laughs> You know, they can kill you. The guy, uh, the guitarist from Slayer recently died from a spider bite. Oh, wow. It took about, uh, I won't, don't quote me directly, but about two years. And uh, he had got all kinds of like, he got sick and um, his functioning was messed up. And then eventually he died from a spider bite. Huh, do they know what kind of spider? Uh, they probably do, but I probably just didn't find that out. Yeah. I think the only... Uh, Jeff Hanneman. Hmm. The only spiders that are dangerous here in our area are black widows. There might be some brown recluses. So yeah, I I I don't like black widows either. But I'm not like I'm not gonna run from it. I'll kill it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've never been bit by a spider, so I don't know what it's like. Our little brother uh, Matt is definitely afraid of spiders as well. Mm -hmm. And that's actually just I want to share something with you guys real quick. One day, my mother and I went to a it was called Save Max. It was at like one of those warehouse grocery stores. Went there, saw a little spider. It actually was about the size of a half dollar, maybe a little bit bigger, a plastic one. So what we did was we painted, it was a brown spider, we painted orange dots on it. Then we came home and planted it on top of the cat's house uh, in the corner. And so about an hour go by and we run downstairs where he's playing by the cat house and we say, Hey Matthew, did you just see that on the news? There's some new brown spider with orange dots on it that it could kill you in one bite. How old is he at this time? He was pretty old. Like seven? No, I think he was like 10. Wow. And we were uh, probably 15, 14, somewhere around there. And our mom was in on it, which was, you know, she liked to do stuff to us like that. So the spider is sitting on the cat house. We we're telling Matt about this fake story that we just saw on the news. And then I said, I didn't think it was going to work. I said, hey, Matt, what's that over there? <laughs> and he said, oh, shit. And he's not supposed to cuss in the house because we never cussed when we were little. But he saw it, and he about passed out. And we were like, don't move, Matt. We got this. My mom took a big encyclopedia book and threw it on the cat house, which made the spider prop up in the air like it was jumping at him and Matt did a full cartwheel in the air to try to run away from it. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen him do. Yeah, it was I great. wish YouTube would have been around when you were a kid. Like, there's so many things that I wish we could, could have like had on YouTube. Like, catching oh. people and putting them out there. You know. What I mean? Yeah. <laughs> we should start doing that. Remember when we wanted to send movies to America's Funniest Home Videos? Yeah. Um, our hamster riding around in a G.I. Joe Jeep. Yes. <laughs> we would put our hats in the Jeep and let's go have it sailing across the kitchen. Speaking of my mom and how she used to do things, I, I believe we spoke about the Candyman thing mm -hmm. where she closed the door on us and after we just watched Candyman and started chanting Candyman and we almost bust down the door. Uh, I, I let Jordan, who's Earth, who's the oldest son, he watched ch uh, Child's Play like a year ago. And to this day, I'll just go in the room at night and I'll just start... Gawi Dambala, <laughs> give me the power, I beg of you. And then he was like, Dad, stop, stop. And Sam, he starts, la, 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 putting his fingers in his ears. <laughs> and we watched Insidious, and you know the Tiny Tim songs on there, Tiptoe Through the yeah. Toilets. 
I I snuck in there. I actually crawled on the floor on my stomach with the laptop, <laughs> so they wouldn't they wouldn't hear me coming. And I and I had it on pause on tiptoe through the tulips. You and crawled into the room. Yeah, and I pushed play on the laptop, and he started. <laughs> and as soon as Jordan heard that, he just started freaking out. <laughs> that was like the funniest thing ever I've done to them. So my wife doesn't like it. She's like, you get that from your mom. I'm like, yeah. It's fun. It's fun to scare kids. <laughs> All the time, I'll just wait around the corner and wait for Willie or Naja to come around and I'll jump out and scare him. <laughs> and Willie holds his chest like he's going to have a heart attack. <laughs> I did. I actually did that to my mom. Remember, um, a couple years ago, when I dropped her off one night, it was like one o'clock at night, or I might have visited her for something, something serious we were talking about. And so I get done talking to her, and she's like, "Okay, bye. You know, good night. We say good night." So it's like one thirty, and she closes the door, and I'm waiting to, for her to hear the lock. And as soon as the door locked, I was going to bang on it, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> but it never locked. And then so. I uh, I wait there for like 15 minutes and she never locks the door. So I call her on my cell phone and I say, "Hey mom, did you uh, lock your door?" And she said, "Why?" I said, "I, don't, I was driving home. There's this crazy guy walking down the street." <laughs> so she's like, uh, "Okay, I, I'll, I'll." She's all scared. I'll go lock it. And as soon as I hear lock, I go boom 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 boom. And she, I hear. Fumbling, I guess she <laughs> she jumped into the bathroom in two leaps, and I called her and she said, "There's someone at the door," and I was like, "No, there's not." She's like, "Is that you?" I was like, "Yeah." She's like, "You fucker!" <laughs> she was so scared. I, I I promised her that day that I never scare her again because she was really shaken up by that. <laughs> yeah. That was okay, so we uh, Brad and I. Each played Mega Man Five. Uh, Aaron, did you get a chance to play it? <laughs> <laughs> That's no. not a fair question to ask someone. No, man. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just, just asking. Just that would be funny if you're like, in fact, I did. I was gonna wiki it and pretend, but I just didn't want to bring phony wiki knowledge and just get <laughs> swatted down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since our notebooks are probably much better than the wiki and all that. <laughs> <I assume. laughs> Wikipedia is not that. Liable? I mean, not liable, but reliable. Reliable. They yeah. check it, but that's Michael Scott right there. <laughs> so on Mega Man Five, it was another one I only played once or twice when I was little. Um, first off, I I thought Charge Man would be easy, so I beat him. I actually beat him using you know no problem at all using the Buster. Uh, then I went to Stone Man, Crystal Man, Star Man, Gyro Man. Wave Man and then they fall. Okay, I stop you for one second. Yeah. For those of us who aren't familiar, what is the Buster and what does it do? The, the Mega Buster is this Mega Man standard pellet gun. Uh, before he gets any power ups, that's the weapon of, that he always starts out with. So it's like a big name for kind of a eh weapon. Yeah. Uh, and to be fair, in Japan, his name is Rock Man and not Mega Man, based off of rock music. And there's Roll, which is his little girl sidekick, so it's rock and roll. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, Proto Man, who's actually Blues Man. But um, sounds a lot more awesome in Japanese. Yeah, and it is. and in in Japan, it's not called the Mega Buster; it's called the Rock Buster. So that sounds more better. Oh uh, yeah, I like that better. And actually, in uh, Mega Man X, was it X when they started using the Guns and Roses? X Five, they used Guns and Roses. The Axel Rose or Axel Rose or Rose. Axel, something like that, for the one of the bosses, and Slash Tiger for Slash. And they had, I thought they had like Dizzy something. Dizzy Whale. Yeah. Yeah. So they use kind of those as references. Mm. Uh, I, I I went through Proto Man's Castle, uh, beat that. The, you, each of his levels, you fight a robot. The last level is actually Proto Man, but you find out it's a fake. You beat him. Go fight Wily again, and you know, rather rinse and repeat another game down. Uh, not too many memorable moments. Um, I, I don't have anything written down, but playing them now, I thought they'd be more of a challenge, but I guess, you know, actually sitting down playing through and focusing on it when you're not a kid, when you're an adult, it's actually pretty easier. Yeah. Uh, I can't say that for Ninja Gaiden. That's a game I still want to beat. I don't even know if I'm going to beat that in my lifetime, <laughs> but I'll try it one of these weeks. Yeah. So, my Mega Man 5... 
Uh, I said I'm going to start with Stone Man because he looks like Hard Man from Mega Man 3. And he was the easiest person in Mega Man 3. Uh, first thing in Stone Man's level, I noticed that there's a pit all the way to the right and a ladder. Like So there's a ladder in the middle of the screen and the pit all the way to the right. I'm thinking, why would they put a pit here? It seems suspicious. So I, I skip the ladder. I'm like, I'm going to go down this pit and find a secret. Yeah. No, I died. You died. <laughs> I died. So, uh, because in Mega Man 4 there are some secret areas like that, there weren't too many in Mega Man 5 like that. Yeah. Uh, I got... Uh, I beat Stone Man pretty easy, went to Crystal Man. I thought maybe Stone beat breaks Crystal, like the not like... Yeah, I thought that too, yeah. no. no. So, uh, so... Uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't beat him. Uh, he ended up beating me, so I left Crystal Man and went to Charge Man. So, the only thing I really have written down for Charge Man is there's a room that you just, you go up a ladder and then you could go right and, mm -hmm. you know, continue on the screen, but to the left there's a huge row of spikes. So I was like, why do they have a huge row of spikes over here and the ways oh, to yeah. the right? So I tried everything. I tried the rush jet. I tried the little arrow you shoot. There's no secrets over there. I, I actually remember that, and I thought I was going to go back and look at it, but I never did. I forgot all about it. it. There's nothing over there. Okay. <laughs> uh, Starman. Uh, that was a cool level. You had, it was kind of like moon gravity, like the underwater level. Yeah. Uh, you jumped real high and slow. Uh, whenever I play this uh, level, or when I was playing this level, I, it brought me to the Goodbye Yellow Brick Road from Elton John. Just that tranquil music floating in in the air. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, and Starman. Uh, no, Charge Man. Does Charge Man give you the kick? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. That weapon heck of sucks. I I found it useful against the first robot in Proto Man's Castle. Mm -hmm. Just slide back and forth, and I beat him make mm -hmm. it easy. So it's pr pretty better than Lead Bubble. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We've got Wave Man. Uh, Right when I saw the um, bubble that you ride on, I just let out a deep sigh, like, oh, this is going to suck. Yeah, I remember that. But it wasn't too bad. Oh, Gyro Man. I have all these... Whenever I beat a boss, I put a check mark. And as you can see on my notes, there's like 8,000 check marks, because this guy was a bitch. I hated fighting this guy. So what, you put a check mark before you fought him? No, no, no. I, oh, after I beat him, I was frustrated. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh. Take that. Uh, uh, Gyro Man, uh, when you meet him, he switch like he automatically goes to the top, and he does a move where he switches gravity, so you guys are never on the same playing field. Oh, is that Gyro Man? Yeah. That's not Gravity Man? Oh, is that Gravity Man? Oh, yeah, that is Gravity Man. So Gravity Man is the one that I was talking about. So did that one uh, Japanese pitcher name his special pitch after Gyro Man? He throws the Gyro Ball? You yes, guys ever he heard did. of that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a instead of a curveball I guess it like goes oh, oh that's crazy that's cool maybe he did well obviously due to Brad's confidence I trust it was Brad's <laughs> yeah, I, yeah confidence is key so with confidence anyone will believe you <laughs> yeah uh, so after uh, I beat Gyro Man and Gravity Man uh, I went back to Star Man used a Mega Buster to kill him uh, Napalm Man, he had the jungle level, that's pretty cool. Um, oh, in Proto Man Stage 1, they had the White Tigers. That reminded me of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game with the White Tigers in level 6. That reminded me of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, White, Tommy, the White, White Ranger Tiger. Tiger Power. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, Green Ranger was better, though. Yeah, it was. With the Dragon Sword. Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, Pretty much it. You just go through the Proto Man castle, beat some uh, silly robots, and then Wily's castle wasn't too bad, and uh, just used the beat power up to beat Wily's last form. So let's go into treasure hunting. All right. So I actually found this at the Goodwill. I wish I could call Matt and get him on the phone and have him explain this game to you more than I could, because I only played it for a little bit, but it's really fun. Star Ocean. Oh, the second story? Is this what you gave Matt, or did you give him, I the, gave him uh, the End of Time? End of time. Right? Oh, this is the first one with the guy with the two dragons. Yep. On, 
What, what's his name? Wasn't his name like Bart or something? Uh, Matt knew the name. I thought it was Donovan, but it's not Donovan. It's something else. Oh, that's cool. Both discs are in here and everything? Yeah. When did you find this? Uh, two, three days ago. Why don't you put up a picture on the MySpace page? I couldn't. It would have been... Um, well, oh, you could have you spoiler could, alert. You could have like just shown um, a little bit, um, like or even the PlayStation thing. That's true. Next time you do that, his name's Ashton. Oh, Ashton Anchors. That's cool. It's got the instruction booklet too. That's awesome. I was gonna say how much I bought bought it for. One fifty. A dollar fifty. I haven't looked up the price on it, but I'm pretty sure it's a pretty expensive game. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Here, two dragons. That help in the battle. Oh. I was gonna, I was gonna revoke your treasure hunting license if you didn't bring anything to the <laughs> table this time. Yeah. Because it seems like I've been doing all the work, but of course I came through again with another game, a game that we played, we rented it once, played through it. We didn't play all the way through it. We played through it and kind of got some secrets, some not. Kind of a choppy game, but it's pretty it's good. Some secret. It's got some like extra blueprints. Extra blueprints. <laughs> oh, Batman Forever. This game is really fun. They made a game out of that? Yeah. <laughs> and what does it play like? I was trying to explain it to the kids. It's kind of like... It's like claymation kind of almost. Um, really? Mortal Kombat mythology. Yeah, that's what it's Kind of like. like that. Like you... It's was, a fighting game? It No. Um, Mortal Kombat Mythologies was... That was a Sub-Zero, right? Mm -hmm. It's a Nintendo 64 game where it's an adventure game. Oh, the platform game was yeah. Sub-Zero? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that kind of plays like. Like you'll push right, and it takes like a split second for him to start walking right. Then you push left, and it it takes a little bit. It's kind of choppy. But and when you push down, he like does a like five five frame uh, thing just to go down, like crouch down. Is yeah. uh, Robin playable too? Yeah, mm -hmm. two player at once, or I think it's two player at once. And you, I remember you fight Sugar and Spice in that game too, huh? Mm -hmm. I think that's what we got up to. It's pretty hard. It is a hard game. Fun game. Yeah, it is fun. I remember just they had like secret places in the levels where you could go find extra blueprints to find like gadgets or vehicles mm -hmm. and stuff. So I picked it up. I actually I found another game that I was going to buy for Nintendo 64. It's called Banjo Kazooie. That's a really fun game. I really enjoyed the heck out of that game. They had an eight ninety nine price tag on it, and I just couldn't. If it was like four ninety nine, I would yeah. have picked it up. Yeah, that's a bit much for that game. Yeah, yeah. Banjo Tooie is real fun too. No, I played that, but I yeah, I I went to Dimple again like four or five times, picked that up. Nothing else. That's my only treasure this week. Yeah. I went to the Goodwill. I bought oh, I bought a six foot HDMI cable. Oh, that's cool. You're only three bucks. Was it Sony? It, I don't know. It's still in the, like new and packaged. So, because oh. the one I have is only like three feet and it's not long enough. Yeah. Top five. Yep. All right. Top five. This top five is probably one of the hardest ones I ever had to do because I had so many. I had to narrow down. I've got so many honorable mentions on here. It's not even funny. Um, I bet you it's going to be fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Brad um, called me when he left Vegas. We'll we'll get into that. We'll talk about Vegas after this, I believe. Yeah. Got to talk about Vegas. Yeah. yeah. So we'll we'll definitely. We'll talk about Vegas after this, but uh, when he left on the Greyhound, uh, he called me and said, uh, what are you going to do for top five? I said, oh, I haven't thought about it. He's like, what about top five songs pre-2000? I was like, all right, we could do that. And then, like, four or five days later, he said, it's too hard, let's just do top five video game characters. Yeah, because I, I got written down here, as you can see, like, 15 songs already. Mm -hmm. I got Maggie down from Rod Stewart, Money for Nothing, Duality from Slipknot, Come On, Feel the Noise. I was just, November Rain, I couldn't, Come I on, like, Eileen. Come on, Eileen. I liked it too, in that house. <laughs> um, and it was just so many songs that I just couldn't even narrow it down so I, I changed it to top five video game characters yeah so who wants to start we'll roll the dice to see okay three high starts yep five woohoo all 
right? Aaron, special um, guest. We're not really going to get this off to a very auspicious start. <laughs> you guys might want to say a prayer to Minoru Arakawa before I give you this, uh, my number five, because it's a character from an Xbox game. Oh, okay. man. And even worse than that, it's a character from Halo. <laughs> <laughs> Have you played Halo? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. It's from Halo 2. Okay. Galo? Yeah, Galo. <laughs> Uh, it's the Arbiter from Halo 2. Okay. Um, I dig that character. It was an alternate storyline. You play the bad guy. Um, he's like a disgraced uh, general of, I don't even know what the aliens are called, but he's a disgraced general of them. And they strip him of his title and they beat him and they put him in a prison. And then the higher ups of his culture force him to go on all these spy missions for him. And eventually he learns that his culture is bad and he starts to. Uh, work against it so it's kind of a cool alternate kind of like at. Nelson Mandela yeah sort of he's like a Halo Nelson Mandela so have you guys I take it you guys haven't played that game no I played it once with this creepy guy oh that was heck of fun his name was David Rounds he's kind of like a Rain Man personality where I don't know what he's at the genius of yet but he's getting there maybe it's selling toys yeah because he he's got like a real bad underbite which he makes him look like a piranha and he's like this creepy 40 year old guy who hung out at the card shop when me and brandon were in dragon ball z the cc game the ccg card game and he invited me over to out to play halo and i was like okay I, i'll give this a whirl we'll, we'll see what happens and i got into this warthog type uh jeep and we were right. riding around on it, and I fell off the cliff, and he, he was all freaking out. He's like, you're not supposed to do that. How are we going to get it back? I, I don't know. <laughs> so I, we played that, and then he put on this um, Japanese animation hentai movie. <laughs> and I was like... You guys watched cartoon porn <laughs> well, together? Well, not really. He, <laughs> he fast-forwarded it to a part where the girl started praying, and he had, she had to grab her breast and started praying. And he's like, look, when she grabs her boobies... She gets power. Said, okay, David, I think I gotta go now. <laughs> but yeah, I played Halo once, not the other one, just the first Halo. Yeah, this one had two separate stories. You had the alien guy, and then you had the Master Chief story. So I like the alien guy. Mm. We had a um, birthday party for Jordan uh, a few years ago, and this kid came. It was a video game character costume uh, party. Uh, Jordan dressed up as Link. I think I was Wario and Brandon was Waluigi and uh, my wife Karen was Peach. Logan was Mario and uh, Sam was Little Mac. He had the green gloves and the shorts and everything. And then Master Chief shows up <laughs> full on armor like he must have spent hundreds of dollars on that costume. I was like this kid, and he takes off his helmet. It's like Lucas from The Wizard. Yeah, he has long hair. He was like, as I like shaking it in wind. <laughs> Come on, Master Chief, really? <laughs> and uh, someone said, "Oh, I think my mom was like, oh, is that Samus?" <laughs> I'm not punch her. That would happen if you punched mom just because you thought it was Samus. <laughs> or uh, did you say, "Is that Metroid?" <laughs> she doesn't know Samus. She probably said it's that much word, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my number five is going to be Leon Kennedy. Oh, thanks for skipping me. Oh, we're going this way? Yeah. Oh, okay. Resident Evil 2, right? Yep. Uh, best character, I believe, in all the Resident Evil series. Uh, he's in 2, 4, and 6. Uh, it has a heck of a cool storyline in part six and I don't know if you'll ever play it because you don't like playing those games but part six is awesome is it um what's is it act is it like Bayonetta or is it over the shoulder like no it's like part four like Dead Space I play it I just you just don't you just don't I don't have it I wanted to name my son Leon that's, that's part of the reason his name's Nolan it's the same letters rearranged oh okay mm. oh that's cool not for the video game I just like the name yeah but uh, Leon, he doesn't take shit from no one. He starts off as a rookie cop in Raccoon PD. Uh, first day on the job, gets hoarded by zombies. Yeah, that's tough. That's a tough. That's control. a tough gig. Yeah. And he had he actually survives, and uh, goes on to become a top uh, executive for the CIA, I think, or something, some uh, government official, top agent. Umbrella? No. 
<laughs> West Fair. Can you guys explain to me why they call it Raccoon City? I feel like, what's the reason for that? Because that's a weird name for a city. They just wanted uh, just a normal suburbia town, just like... They, they wanted to be out of nowhere, what I think, if I can remember right, just a normal town. They just made up a name. Okay. Um, and, you know, part four, he, he actually went and tried to save the president's daughter. Uh, real cool storyline was actually part six. I was debating between him and Chris, but then I was like, you know what, Chris, he puts up with a lot of crap. Shiva, Shiva Olimar from part five, Leon wouldn't have put up with her. He would have been like, bitch, get, get to the back. Okay, you have to do co-op, huh? Yeah. Do you have to do co-op in six? Yeah, but it's a lot better. Your your partner doesn't actually die, unless you play like human on human. So it's like uh, infinite, Bioshock infinite. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they could get hurt and stuff, but they don't die. And it's uh, part fi- uh, part five. She you're just saving Shiva left and right. She's always dying. She don't know how to take care of herself. Mm-hmm. It relies on Chris, but Leon was just been like, get to the back. Where's Ada? So, the uh, in part six, Leon's storyline deals mostly with zombies, and where, whereas Chris and Jake deal with more of the uh, sagas where they have guns and stuff. So six has zombies. Yes. Oh, okay. In Leon's storyline, he does. There's multiple storylines. Yeah. Yes. It's so cool. They have three different stories, and they all kind of interact. Do I have to play five to play six? Like, no. Okay. I mean, there's some aspects of five in it, but like the BSAA and stuff. But I thought you played five. No. Uh, yeah. I, I if you I have five and six, if you want to borrow them, you just need to bring back Bayonetta. Oh yeah. I yeah. You, you could take him today if you want, but um, you know what? You you need to finish Bayonetta first, then you can borrow those two. I'm gonna treat you like the kids. <laughs> <clears throat> You can't buy another game. They, they want games like every week. Oh, I want this game. Or like, you 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 get whatever the Xbox equivalent of platinum is on a game, and I'll buy you another game. Yeah. So you beat Bayonetta, you platinum it before you borrow another one of my games. Have to platinum it. <laughs> Bayonetta's not that hard to platinum. Well, no. All right. My number five is actually consists of four different people, kinda. Is it the Planeteers? No, it's five. <laughs> well, heart doesn't count. <laughs> what does Machu do call animals? What the heck? <laughs> that funnier dice kid is heck of funny. <laughs> Have you seen that? Don Cheadle? No. Uh, they do a spoof of Captain Planet and Don Cheadle's Captain Planet. It's, it's really funny. Um, my number five is Spider-Man from... Spider-Man Shadow Spider Dimension. I never played that game. That I game heard is, it was cool though. It's tight. There's uh, four different uh, Spider-Man in that game. You know, there's the Amazing Spider-Man, Ultimate Spider-Man, Spider-Man Noir, and Spider-Man 2099. Uh, each. So this is a bunch of different spider The game's about a bunch of different Spider-Man realms. Yeah, what happens is... Um, it's not the Clone Saga. No, uh, okay. Madam Web comes and... Uh, she was in the cartoon, right? Yeah. Yeah. And some sure. something happens where uh, all of these dimensions are shifting, so the amazing Spider-Man like jumps into the uh, role of um, like the 2099, then he gets transported to the noir, and there's two. I l- I like the 2099 books. Yeah. And my favorite one was Doom 2099. Mm. It was actually a good book some reason somehow I remember we bought a pack it had all the 2099 number ones and like Spider-Man uh, the worst character was Ravage 2099 oh, I don't he was like a guy one. who lived in a junkyard and then when he became I don't know how he got a superpower but he just took a bunch of garbage from the junkyard and put it on as his costume <laughs> that character I don't know who was smoking what when they came up with that guy yeah we had the fort pack for, we got it from Toys R Us mm-hmm Punisher, Spider-Man. I don't think we had X-Men, did we? I don't think so. I, we, all the number one issues, and we just let them go to crap. The Doom one was good, and the Spider-Man one was pretty good. The Punisher one was kind of eh. Oh. Interestingly, his parents uh, worshipped Thor as a god in the 2099. Uh, Punisher? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. That's cool. So, yeah, the t- Spider-Man, he's... the. I think the, the best 99 one, or the best... 
Spider-Man to play is uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. Uh, he's very funny. Uh, he fights the best bosses. There's bosses all over the place like Juggernaut. There's Green Goblin 2099. There's uh, Carnage. Just a bunch of great villains, and he's you know classic Spider-Man. You're including Carnage with the great villains. Yes, I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> you don't think so? Nah. Uh, I'm uh, not big on the evil costume villains. I think the reason why Carnage is because that's kind of what introduced Brian out of comics is Maximum Carnage. Oh. And so uh, that's the mental reason. Yeah, it, we got our love of Venom and Carnage uh, from that. Not only that game, but that comic book as well. Because that what we played first was the game, and we're like, "There's a comic book of this." Was it Carnage because Venom, the costume Venom, had a baby with another costume? No, uh, Cletus Cassidy, actually, um, the one who is Carnage, was in prison. I remember that, but I'm saying the costume itself was the child of the Venom costume, right? I thought he ate a piece of the symbiote. Is that what happened? Yeah, he, in the comic book he said he, he ate it. Um, it. It's a little piece of it that got left behind when they broke out of prison. And he ate a piece of it and turned into carnage. Oh, so that okay. I'm ready for my, my number four. Yep. Okay, so I used to play a lot of is the correct term RTS, real time strategy games. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, in my house we had <laughs> my dad had a bunch of computers, He's a computer geek from way back. So we had like three, four computers, and we would all uh, play on a local area network. Mm -hmm. Um. So. I really liked uh, World of Warcraft 3. So my number four is the uh, Orc Warrior Shaman Priest Thrall <laughs> World, World of Warcraft 3. Uh, kind of an anti-hero character. Um, made you think about the Orcs in a different way. And I just thought the storyline for the character was pretty cool. Was cool character. Is that when they do work complete? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, lo I love Warcraft and I think World of War um, Warcraft Three was my was my favorite. I remember that playing that. Yeah, I remember on the PlayStation we played it. Yeah. Oh, did you play yeah. it on PlayStation? I think it was Warcraft Two. It wasn't Part Three. How did it translate on the PlayStation? I remember trying to play one on a console all the time, and it it was weird. But now it's just used to all the hotkeys and stuff from the computer. Yeah, I remember playing uh, Sim City on PC and then going playing it on Super Nintendo and I was like, what the heck is this? Yeah. It didn't translate well. It was hard because the computer games would have so many different commands and then how do you narrow that down to um, you know, just a few buttons? Yeah. You have to do a really good job with designing it. You know what game did translate over well was Sim Ant. Sim Ant was heck of fun. Oh. Let's move it. this away from the wall. I think it's making it crack. Sim Ant uh, was a cool game. Uh, hard to find, so I'm always looking for that one. Uh, my number four is going to be Mega Man. Mm -hmm. per, uh, preferably Mega Man X from the X series because that's when it got darker. You had uh, people's arms getting cut off and it actually people talked and there was storyline, story dialogue, introduced Zero. But Mega Man X was cool uh, when he would go find in all the armor upgrades and the levels and actually become more powerful. So... I, I chose Mega Man just because of that's what we've been playing recently, and I, it's always had a place in my heart for Mega Man series ever since we were little, playing it over at Grandma's house, trying to beat it, and mainly two and three is what brings me to it. So yeah, Mega Man uh, X takes place in the future where Doctor Light is no longer living, uh, and Mega Man gets I think dug up, and he has to help save the world from the Reploid invasion uh, from Sigma. And Mavericks. Yeah. Are they called Maverick? Yeah. Because he's a Maverick hunter mm -hmm. or something? Yeah. And so there's... Sigma could just chew Dr. Wily's ass out. And Sigma's a beast. Sigma's so crazy. But you know Dr. Wily probably come back and like invent some heck of cool machine to kill him or something. <laughs> but Sigma actually turned into a virus. Remember that? In X3? Yeah. Sigma virus, yeah. And, and yeah, when you when you fought him, he was just like this virus, and I was like, how the heck are you gonna beat this guy? And hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and that actually, Mega Man X, you could get the special Street Fighter moves. Yeah. There's a secret where you keep the Hadouken, which is heck of strong, but it's hard to, uh, it's it's not as easy to hit people with. Uh, and then part two, do you get the Hurricane Kick? 
And then part three, you get the show Ryokin. Mm -hmm. So that was cool. Oh, Mega Man was my number four as well. Oh, that's tight. Yeah. If Nick was going to be here, I was going to be like, yeah, my number five is Kane. <laughs> <laughs> From Final Fantasy IV. Yeah. But he didn't come, so I didn't do that. Uh, are you going to say something about Mega Man, or you kind of already did? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much Oh, um, Mega Man, have you played Mega Man Zero X or Zero? Yeah, for the, Game Boy? Those games are hard. Those games are hard. But I got up to the last boss, and I couldn't finish it. That's when you could use the eat the fairies or whatever, yeah, right? The elves. Get more powerful. The elves. Mm -hmm. But um, the Remember Breath of Fire three with the fairies. That's tight. That was tight. We got the fairy village. We got to talk about that. Was later. that Breath of Fire three or two? Three, I thought. The two is where you get the fairy village. Is it? Yeah. No. You don't get the fairy village in part two. You sure? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I'm sure it's part three. We have Momo and stuff. Part two, you, you don't get the fairy village. Don't you, you get some you, other village? You get your own village that you build. Oh, okay, yeah. That's what I was thinking of. And you get Ganner, the dude's dad, and from the well, and, and he flies and makes this. See, fairy village is part three. And uh, cause don't you get a casino? You can build a casino. You can now. if you get the right yeah, the right carpenter. Yeah, but um, the reason I couldn't beat Mega Man or Mega Man Zero is because you assume the role of Zero. Uh, it's more even more in the future. Mega Man's not around, and Zero's been... Um, place to save the world but that at the end of Mega Man Zero you fight Mega Man yeah Mega Man's the bad guy so I was like this is bullshit yeah I couldn't finish it I was like there's no way <laughs> <laughs> you just go there and just strike it from the continuity <laughs> it's not canon <laughs> <laughs> you just go there and like just have Mega Man kill Zero yeah. and then you delete your game and like oh he killed Zero <laughs> yeah alright my number three is Slayer from Guilty Gear X Oh, and I picked Slayer because I love the character design. Um, I think his backstory is pretty interesting, and they don't tell you too much about him. And I think his moves are really fluid. And I figured I had to put one fighting game character on here, and it's the only fighting game I've ever felt like I'm somewhat competent in. Um, but yeah, I just love the character. Cool graphics, cool story. Just a classy dude. Man, I thought Sackett was going to be on your list. Nah, you know I thought about Sackett, <laughs> but. He's not really one of the best video game characters, at least not to me. Yeah, it, that's the game we played when I was Testament, right? That's Guilty Gear. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember playing that against you in Vegas. Yeah, just beating you one time. Like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Went out on a high note. <laughs> <laughs> Testament, savage. Um, my number three is going to be Ken from the Street Fighter series. Best Street Fighter character of all time, in your opinion? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Um, his uh, show Ryokin is like the best move you could ever it's the ultimate defense and offense it's like the best move anyone could ever use in their life okay. I aspire to wow. use it one day on my punching bag <laughs> uh, there's actually a flow chart that I'm going to put on the the, the uh, Facebook page which is the show Ryukin ch flow chart and so basically when you guys take a look at it uh, it's what Ken should use, uh, it says fight, beginning of the fight. This is the flow chart? This is the flow chart. Okay. There's some options say, okay, start off, you always start off using a jumping hard kick, which I always do. I start off using that, and then it says, did it hit him? Yes or no? And it says no, jump backwards. If it says yes, do show Ryukin. Uh, so if you jump backwards and you said no, use Hadouken. Did it hit him? Yes, use Hadouken again. <laughs> Did it hit him? No. What did he do? It knocked me down. Okay, yeah. Uh, it knocked me down. Is he close? Yes. You sure you can. Is he close? No. Fuck it. You sure you can again. <laughs> anyway, so it's just basically a flow chart uh, centralizing the sure you can, and it's kind of comical, but it's it's just hilarious. But Ken, I've always used him over Ryu, just because in Street Fighter 2, who would use the that his uh, kick throw was instead of Ryu would just throw him back. He would do a flying rolling throw backwards, and so and he had the long blonde hair. So I just always use him instead of Ryu. My number three, funny, is actually a Street Fighter character as well. Is it Sakura? No, <laughs> it's Blanca. Oh, fuck Blanca! I saw that. Come. <laughs> uh, in turn, I I used to be you know a Ryu character. I'd always pick him. But as soon as I started playing Alpha 3 and saw the power of Blanca, 
there's no turning back from that. Um, a pretty good memory I have is when we were over uh, She Who Won't Be Named, one of Aaron's exes. Uh, we were over that house playing uh, video games and watching UFC videos and stuff. No way. <laughs> 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 Bullshit, right there. there's, a there's a bunch of horrible <laughs> people named that name. <laughs> there are. Yes, Apologies yes. to any listeners who might be wonderful people with that name. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> was, was she redheaded too? Uh, her hair color always changed. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what was her What was her uh, carpet like? <laughs> uh, uh, like a blackish brown. Probably? Just a really like a really generic, dirty brown blonde oh, okay. color. Evil. <laughs> We were over there playing uh, <laughs> playing video games, and uh, I was playing. We were playing Street Fighter Alpha Three, and I was just not losing. I was Blanca tearing everyone up. It was like I was playing for like two hours, and uh, I saw my wins were up to like maybe thirty two, thirty three, and then Nick sits down, and he was so determined to beat Blanca with Ken. He w I looked up and. Another hour went by, it was getting late, everyone wanted to leave, and we were supposed to do something that night. Maybe just, just throw it, just, just throw it, just to appease him, just yeah. throw him a bone. I, so saw, it, Brandon doesn't do that. <laughs> I saw the uh, 57 wins, <laughs> Nick was near near tears, he was frustrated as <laughs> all. That is probably the only time I ever laid down and made it look like... See, I knew he threw it. <laughs> that was the only time I've ever, like... And it's so hard with Blanca that you know you're when I play him, it's uh, like automatic the moves that he does. Like I know what to do when this person does this, and I know how to do the ground slide with the fist, went to avoid the Hadoukens, and it was so hard not to do those moves when Nick would do like a shuriken or, <laughs> or a jump attack. You had to fight your reflexes. I did, and uh, I that was the only time. Uh, every other time that he beat me, he beat me for real. But that's the only time I ever throw it. He has beat me with Blanca since then. Uh, he uses he uses Chun Li and Ken, uh, but he's beat me. Man, that, I I I think I've only won one match against you with Blanca. I never could get the two match out to that. That he's just a beast. Yeah. And uh, one other thing I wanted to tell about Ken is there's this awesome YouTube video. We're right? done with Ken. Oh, <laughs> We're done with Blanca. He just got raped <laughs> by a donkey. Okay. Oh. I'd like to see that. I bet you would, freak. <laughs> um, so, there's an awesome video of this championship. I don't know what it is, but it's some championship of Street Fighter. I think what's the three. one? I think it's Street Fighter Three. Yeah, we Third do Strike. That. Yeah. And this dude's playing as Ken, and he's about you know he he's low on health. And all of a sudden, this kid using Chun Li as the opposing any character. any special move. If he would block, like if Chun Li would attack with a special move and he would have blocked, he would have died. So this, you could tell this kid's trying to use Chun Li's special move, but he's like throwing it. So he, he's like waiting at the right time. You could tell she's doing like the back down to whatever it is. You could tell they're going in motion, and he presses, doesn't do it, and then finally he pulls it off and does the Chun Li super move. And on Alpha, on Street Fighter Three Third Strike, if you push forward at the exact time as you're hit, it's like a parry where you don't get hit. Where you, where you block it, you don't get hit. So Chun Li hits him, but he's just parrying. He's just, and it's like a multi-hit. And thing. you know how fast Chun Li is with their lightning kick. So he was. He's just boom boom. He hit. He's precision every time. He blocks her whole special move. And then even then, um, at the last one of the last hits, she kicks upward and she goes up and does a jump kick. So not only did he parry. He jumped up with her and blocked that parry. He came down and hit a shuriken and killed her. So that's why shuriken is the best move ever. <laughs> that that video, I'll, I'll find it. I'll put it up. That's like a tight video. I watched it. I watched it probably once every couple months just to relive that moment. Yeah. So that that was my additional Ken story. So Brandon just went. So second. Um, yep. Okay. Number two. Number two for me. Uh, I was given this game by my uncle when I was. 10, 11, and uh, uh, my number two is Qbert. Oh. I feel like you know, no matter what trends come and go, a character like that whose story is just not based on anything <laughs> is just all going to stick around. And I like how he talked to you, but in his own language. Didn't it always look like he was cussing at you? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. He's a man ahead of his time. 
Yeah. Love Qbert. I have it a mod of it on my uh, computer. Qbert is actually, if you guys have seen The King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters, uh, Billy Mitchell gives a, an old lady a package to deliver to Brian Ka, is it? He delivers a special package and he's like, don't, if you, it's okay if you die, but this video cannot die. And she's actually going to go play the Qbert chant. She's submitting her high score for Qbert, so th that's what made me thought of that. <laughs> but uh, Fistful of Quarters, King of Kong is a great documentary. I recommend you guys watching it if you guys haven't yeah, watched it already. A lot so, of fun. Billy Mitchell's a beast. Qbert was in uh, Wreck-It Ralph too, wasn't he? Yes. My number two... Wasn't Blanca in Wreck-It Ralph? Yeah, he was. Yeah. Was Ken in Wreck-It Ralph? Mm -hmm. Ryu and Ken were. Oh. Shut up. <laughs> you haven't seen it. <laughs> That's not Wreck-It Ralph. Yeah, there was a scene where they were uh, walking through the lobby holding hands. <laughs> <laughs> My number two is going to have to be Samus from the Metroid series. Uh, I call her Samus Aran on the Metroid other M, it's Samus Aran, but either way you put it, Samus is a great character. She was the quiet type up until Metroid other M, which kind of, I was looking forward to it, but it kind of ruined the series for me. Uh, but uh, just you know, playing through the first Metroid, you don't know it's a uh, female until you beat the game, or you put in the Justin Bailey code, and just her whole storyline. I think through Super Metroid is what Met uh, Super Metroid and Metroid Prime is what really made me like the games a lot, and just her going through you know the first person perspective on the Prime series and Super Metroid. It's just I always picked her on Melee and Brawl, so just great character for me. Oh yeah. My number two is uh, Gab Gabriel Belmont from oh, yes. Lords of Shadow, uh, Castlevania. I could have went with any of the Belmont clan. Uh, Simon, uh, Trevor, I guess. Richter. Richter was really cool, but Gabriel, uh, that game had the most story. Even though it's like an alternate path, like an ultimate dimension, I guess, for the Castlevania series, the story is just amazing. Uh, I really don't want to spoil the ending, but the ending just blew me, blew me away when I saw it. It blew my mind. Yeah, I was like, I have to watch, or I have to wait, wait till part two comes out, because it's going to be so good. Alright, um, my number one is Arthas Menethil, also known as the Lich King. Um, hmm. He's from World of War, he's from Warcraft 3, also. Uh, for me, he's the most tragic video game character I come across. He's the son of the king and he goes uh, on an expedition up north um, because there's been all these rumors of something bad being up north and he happens to find this sword when he gets the sword it turns out the sword is demonic and it possesses him and he becomes like an evil uh, knight and he comes back home and his, his father throws this big celebration they're throwing rose petals out everywhere he goes into his father's throne room and he kills his father and he takes the crown and he becomes king and he just reign of terror from there. It's just a really tragic character. Um, in the game he doesn't go evil all at once he just kind of slowly uh, becomes corrupted and evil. There's a lot of story in these Warcraft games. Yeah. And uh, Warcraft 3, is that um, RTS too? Yeah, it's an RTS also. Okay. He's like a, the, you probably already know but they would do it like you'd have your um, buildings and you'd build it and you'd make your characters and all this stuff but then you'd, all, you'd get like one Character that was like a like a super character, mm -hmm, yeah, and they would be in command of everybody, and they'd have a few special abilities and stuff like that. And he he was one of those characters. So was it like there was a level you had to you know build from the ground up each level, uh -huh. and then you go out attack and kill ref kill, and then then it shows a story and like cut scenes or something. Yeah, so you would have you would either have to take something over or protect something, or you'd have to rescue someone. And yeah, and then they do cutscenes, and their cutscenes were some of the the best that I had seen. Uh, the animation is super good. Mm. Uh, the story was really, really nice in that game. Um, but yeah, I really did. Oh, that. so the World of Warcraft, they have Wrath of the Lich King. Is that from the same guy? From yeah, Earth? he's been a character that's continued. He's continued uh, on in in the World of Warcraft. I've never played it, but uh, yeah, he's a pretty popular character. So he. He's continued on. Okay. Yeah. My number one is going to be have to be Link. Yeah, that's my number one too. I figured it would be. I almost changed it, and I was like, Brandon's going to put Link as number one, but 
kind of pointless because then I wouldn't be true to myself. I wouldn't be telling them who my true top five is. Link from Legend of Zelda is always going to be number one. Just I think what did it for me was a link to the past. I mean, played through Zelda one. We played that a lot, but they didn't actually get into the whole story of it until Link to the Past. Well, for me, I don't know if they did it in the Game Boy games, but uh, Link to the Past and Twilight Princess, uh, even Skyward Sword, even though it didn't have Ganon in it, still a great game. You 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 didn't mention a Link to the or uh, Adventures of Link Part Two. Yeah, the only reason that that game would have been so much better if Ganon was actually in the game. I think there could have been a lot of things that could have made that game better. <laughs> <laughs> that game was fun. Brad and I got that game. Uh, Uncle Ron said he found it on the street. Yeah, uh, behind our apartment. Yeah. Do you think is that where he really found it? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> to this day, <laughs> oh, I, was, I remember for like the next five years when we were little, we'd, every time we'd go down that street, we'd look down the, just to see if there's another video game. <laughs> yeah. My cousin would... would um, bring us games that said uh, this item for display only. <laughs> we had a lot of Sega games that said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember one time our uncle, um, or was it our uncle Sam, who's like, I'm, go I'm going to a big score today. You guys are going to get like 15 new games and like every day. Okay, only a week away. Mm -hmm. Okay, only like five days away. And he brought us like this big old thing that had like 10 or 15 games in it. One of them was Baseball Simulator, mm -hmm. and it's just like Will and Dylan, that's that's their way. Yeah, um, the only thing about a Link to, or Adventure of Link, we, in order to beat it, we had to play through it in one sitting, because the battery was ripped out of the back of the game, and it wouldn't work, it wouldn't save, so we had to get up in the morning, play all through seven, eight palaces in order to beat it, and that last palace was no joke. That last, even to get to that last palace, you had to go through the path, mm -hmm. and then you had to. Th that that was crazy. Now this is a noob question, but is uh, Legend of Zelda the first game you could save? Hmm. Probably. Yeah. yeah, I think it might have been the first one that actually had the battery backup. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. I know that's the first game we got that was like that, and there's not too many out there before that. I don't think there was. You know, Hogan's Alley was out there. Mario Brothers. Um. Yeah, Final Fantasy, but that came after, yeah. so Zelda might have been the first one. Anything you want to say about Link? I just, th I just think that it's really awesome that he's left-handed, and that he's returning back to his roots and being left-handed. Oh, I can't wait for a Wii U game for it to come out. I haven't bought a Wii U yet, uh, shame on me, but I saw Bayonetta 2 trailer, and I was like, you know they're going to make, make a new uh, Legend of Zelda game, HD. <sighs> Did you see The Wind Waker? Yeah, the remake of Wind Waker HD, that, that, that's going to be awesome too. But you know probably next year at E3 they're going to release Zelda for Wii U. Yeah. Either that or they're going to give up and go third party. But yeah. I don't think they're selling a lot of Wii U's. I know they're not selling a lot of... I wouldn't mind seeing a Zelda game on Sony PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be one less system in my house. Exactly. So, yeah. Wasn't Link on one of the Soul Calibur games? Yep, Soul Calibur 2. For a game game. Um, PlayStation had Heihachi? Uh, Kratos? Kratos, and who did Xbox have? Heihachi, I think. Didn't they? Well, Heihachi was on PlayStation 2 as well. Mm -hmm. Remember, one of them had Darth Vader. That might have been... That was Xbox, I think. Was it? Yeah, because I remember Kratos... Or was it Yoda? One was Yoda. That must have been the other Soul Calibur yeah. chicken, but I don't. I can't remember what Xbox had. I thought Xbox had Spawn. Did they? That's what it was. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Good memory. Spawn, another awesome Super Nintendo game. Yeah. <laughs> was it really? Started out with nine 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 health, and you when you use your powers, it would go down. Mm -hmm. And if you get hit, it goes down. If you die, it goes down. So you have to conserve your power all the way up to Melbolgia at the end, Mogul, whatever that thing's name is. Uh, yeah, we beat it. Um, PlayStation spawn, stuck dick so bad. I don't even remember playing that game. You were supposed to be able to like rip off people's arms and hit people with it, but we never figured out how to do it. So I was like, man, fuck this game. I never liked that character. <laughs> the movie was tight with John Leguizamo <laughs> as the, uh, the violator. <laughs> Was that his name, the Violator? Yeah, yeah the Violator. Violates people. That, 
If I didn't pick Tormund, Violator probably would have been my second choice. <laughs> Vegas? Let's go into Vegas. Oh, why don't you guys post your t t some of your favorite characters up? Uh, we'll go in and comment on them there as well on our Facebook page. So. Yeah, and we also now have a Twitter account, Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Uh, Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia on Twitter. So go ahead and uh, follow, us. follow us there. Uh, like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Uh, and we're also on Podomatic.com. Don't know how long we're going to be there, but uh, we may we may switch uh, companies. Okay. So let's talk about Vegas. Vegas started out great for me, <laughs> um, except um, I got a call from my wife. She actually broke her tailbone that night. Her first day out at her sister's house, she went to the spa. Tiles were slippery. Slipped, fell right on her tailbone. That was Friday night. Yep. Yeah. Same night Brandon got corn dog. So I think <laughs> it traveled <laughs> yeah. all the way to the Pacific Rim. <laughs> that corn dog was amazing. Still hurt? No, it does. It stopped hurting that night. I didn't do it hard enough. <laughs> I do have to admit to the viewers that I actually did hold back a little bit because. I think if I would have done it all the way, Brandon would have had a sad Vegas trip. <laughs> so next time we have a contest and that's the prize, there'll be no holding back because <laughs> you won't be on vacation. Oh. Practice yeah. that weight shift. <laughs> if you guys uh, haven't seen it already, uh, Corn Dogging of Crisis on YouTube, I think we're up to like 37 or 38 views. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and check it out again. It's hilarious. You can see me scratch my crotch too, right? Thirty between thirty and thirty two seconds, Aaron's actually standing there holding the mic, scratching himself <laughs> in all his glory. I think my favorite part of that whole that whole video is right after I corn dog you, Nick laugh. He like <laughs> <laughs> you guys listen to it, that's like my favorite part. Because Nick just he can't hold himself together. And Brandon's just like, Oh, oh. <laughs> Were you, were you saying it's bleeding? Or no, it burns. After that, though, I thought when you said I can't get up, uh, it wasn't bleeding. Oh, and I thought you said is it bleeding? I might have, maybe. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I was laughing so hard I fell on the floor. I don't know. My knees were so weak. <laughs> so Vegas started off great. Uh, we did double podcast that night. That was so enjoyable doing podcast on our 17th floor of our hotel. Looking out on all the peons, felt like the king of the castle. <laughs> king of the castle, king of the castle. <laughs> yeah. Um, so any any comments for the first night? Uh, no, I was pretty, you know, that drive was very long. Yeah, it was a long drive. It didn't feel long to me because I was just, I, I love driving road trips with my friends and it was just like, it was a gay old time for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you turned into gay Wolverine. <laughs> with the licorice, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a pretty fun ride out there. I uh, couldn't believe how hot it was. Even standing in the parking lot waiting for Nick to get the hotel key. <laughs> I think it's hot. It was brutal. What did we do the next day? We went and got the show tickets, right? Yeah. For for the tournament of kings. Uh, it was hot then too. As soon as we stepped out, stepped out, it was like already ninety nine hundred degrees. Yeah. I think it was uh, one seventeen the day we yeah. on Saturday. Yeah. So that that's the day after we got our show tickets, we went out and stocked up and went to the Valley of the Fire National State Park. I would have loved to stay there longer than we did. I wouldn't have. It was hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that, that that's the only exception. If it was cooler, I would have loved oh, yeah. to stay out there longer. Oh yeah, I would have liked to go hiking and go through the trails and mountains. And I remember that. So we set out to the Valley of Fire. We stop at a pharmacy, Rite Aid, Walgreens, one of those type stores, picked up some supplies, we got some sunscreen, some drink, water, yes. cucumber melon cucumber Gatorade, melon Gatorade. <laughs> <sighs> I found a cucumber lime, not I the was, same man, I know, I, I love cucumber in my water, I, I saw Aaron, as soon as he opened it up and I smelled it, I was like, it's not cucumber, <laughs> it was a drink, and it just smelled amazing, and I'm sure it tasted amazing, it was super cheap too, it was like a buck, so, yeah. Yes, yeah, so then we went out in the Valley of Fire. I think my favorite part so of that. So hot. I tried to pee on a rock, but it turned to steam before it even touched <laughs> yeah. the ground. I, I wanted to set the mood before we started talking about it. Aaron put on this this song, this band. 
uh-huh. set the tone. I was like so jazzed for it. Grave? No, it was uh, Earth. Earth. That's Super right. slow stoner desert. I wouldn't even call it rock. It's just slow. <laughs> <laughs> that like that was getting my heart pumping. It was like a perfect mood going out to the desert. We had to drive, I think it's 11 miles to get to it. Yeah, off, of the, off of the freeway. Off the freeway. And yeah, Aaron went out there. So did you like, you didn't do it in the sun, did you? Or did what? you like, try to write your name with it, didn't you, your P? Yeah, I, I did it behind the rock. And I was lying. It really, I really was able to write my name on the rock. Yeah. That was a lot. That was impressive. That's a lot. And it looked like it too. He was like doing it in cursive. <laughs> yeah, he did it in cursive. Yeah. Yeah. The, I also went to the bathroom, but that I think that when I peed, it was just like thick fluid. Like it was like real thick urine. <laughs> <laughs> was it white? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but it was a lot came out. It was just real thick. Huh. Like I was dehydrated already. So w- the first stop we made, Aaron actually climbed up on this mountain. It's by no means a mountain, but it's a <laughs> large structure. <laughs> it's a large rock. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to go up there. With we Aaron. have pictures of that, don't we? Yeah. yeah. You can put them up if people want to see them, right? Yeah, yeah. I think Aaron, Nick's got them. Yeah. And so I, I climbed up there with Aaron. And I was like, oh, this is so awesome. And then I looked down. And I was like, oh, am I going to get down? <laughs> And Aaron was, uh, you know, nimble, limber, however you want to say it, just like jumping down like Wolverine off the rocks, and I'm like touching the rock. It's like, oh, that's hot. <laughs> the rocks are hot as hell. And, and then Brandon comes up and is like, why are you coming up? I want to get down. I want to wait to get another picture. I'm like, oh, God, come on. So I'm just sitting there with both my hands on hot rock shaking, lifting them up. Alternatively, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> I'm like, come on, hurry up and get up here. <laughs> and like, I don't know if you could see it in the picture, but I'm like frightened and terrified. <laughs> like, climbed up on this, probably like 20 feet off the ground. <laughs> it was high. Yeah. You, you could see the terror, the terror in your eyes on the video Nick took of you coming down the rocks. Is there video? Of that? Yeah, of oh, you wow. coming down the rocks. Yeah, so I ended up sliding down on my butt through this like steep rock. Aaron just like took two jumps and it was like, all right, it's easy. No, no, it's not. <laughs> I felt like the um, Corey on Whitewater Summer when he's crossing the bridge mm-hmm. and he's like terrified. That's how I felt. And so uh, I finally get down and Brandon's like, oh, how do I get down? I was like, it's not that bad if you just slide down on your butt. And then he's like halfway down and he's like, where do I go from here? I was like, just do that. Put your foot there and you got it. And then so Brandon and I found this we went behind the mountain, and it's a little like cave, like for lizards, well, for giant lizards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was like this little you guys alcove. Look like, yeah. <laughs> it was like this little alcove, and I just it was like a shady alcove inside, and the rocks weren't hot. We laid there probably about for 15 minutes chilling. I got a picture of that. Yeah, that was cool. I have a picture of you taking a picture of that no. <laughs> <laughs> when Nick had his long hair still before he shaved it off oh yeah so after that stop we went and stopped to look at some petrified wood at this point I'm already <laughs> exhausted and the petrified wood was a let down huh? yeah it was it was like two like tree trunks that had fallen that were like gated off it was just... And it, it wasn't like you get out of the car and look, oh, there's a wood. No, you had to go down this long trail through the rocks. And, and I was halfway down and I was like standing there. I'm like, please, <laughs> please, Brandon. Brandon and Nick were in one area and then Aaron went off into another. And I was following Brandon and Nick and I was just like, please, just say it's not that great looking. Say it's not amazing. And I'll just start hiking back up. Because at this point, I'm already sweating to death. My water that I just bought is already <laughs> hot. <laughs> 117 degree weather um, very uncomfortable should have wore like a tank top but it was it was hot and I was already feeling the wrath of the sun and I was just, and so Aaron or Brandon and Nick's like you know the petrified wood's not that amazing I was like great and I started walking <laughs> back up the cliff to the Nick's truck and then we went to the the tourist station right the visitor yeah, station uh-huh. That was an oasis. <laughs> that was an oasis out of the desert. Uh, like on Secret of Evermore when you're trudging through the desert and you find that oasis spot and you just like want to sit there and just drink all the water. But the visitor station had 
water. We ate our sandwiches that Nick graciously made for us. They had these cool walking sticks that was like stabs from uh, Lord of the Rings Gandalf staff. I almost bought one, but it had a forty-one dollar sticker on it. Wow! So like, screw it. I'm not buying a walking stick. It, it wasn't even made from anything around there. No. Which is what made me not want to get it. Yeah. Like yeah. I, when we went to the Redwoods, I I would scored a staff made actually from the Redwoods that I gave to my son. That's like a tie. Yeah. So we ate our lunch. Our lunch consisted of a wheat bread sandwich that had pepper jack, pepperoncinis, turkey. And mustard. Dijon, Dijon mustard. Lovingly prepared by Mr. Jones. Yeah, it had lettuce too. Lettuce too, yeah. And, and it was great. Um, and then we saw the most majestic beast you could ever see in your life. The, 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 rat, the goat of crisis. So we're driving down the church to find another attraction, if you want to call it an attraction, <laughs> after the visitor center. And Brandon goes, oh, that's tight. They put put up fake goats out here. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, there's a goat up in the mountains. They they planted it there, the fake one. And Nick's like, no, they wouldn't put fake goats up here. It's probably a real goat. So we turn around and go find it. All of a sudden, we see it. It was a ram. And I feel bad because I implied that Brandon had imagined the goat. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. I... I, I was thinking that too, though, because we were trying to, we, were, we drove down like a quarter mile, turned around and backpedaled, and, and we were backtracking, and we didn't see the ram. We are like, Brandon, did you just say this just so we could, like, turn around or something, and, you know, you're, you're trying to imply you saw things, I don't know if it's a heat stroke or what, but then Brandon's like, it's right around here somewhere, and there it was, on the rocks, just looking at us. So I get all excited, like, that's a fucking ram. <laughs> and they're like, let's get quiet, let's quiet, let's get out of the car quietly. And so I, I get out all loud, of course. Who slams their door heck a lot? That was me. <laughs> and it doesn't run away, probably because it's hot as hell. It's like, I found it. Everything was breathing heavy. <laughs> it was sitting in like an alcove that we were sitting in. It was like shaded. And we were just sitting there not moving. And Brandon's like, I can't get a good picture. And I said, just go closer. It's fine. If it runs away, we'll try to get a picture. You know, just get closer. It's like inching forward, inching forward. I, I didn't, at this point, I didn't know if he was scared or what. But I, I was like, don't worry about it, Brandon. If you're scared, I will fuck that round up. Because me and you, we could, we could get it and we could kill it. I wasn't scared. I just didn't want it to run away and miss the picture. Okay. So... But then it looked at you when you got close. And it had big horns, too. Heck of big horns. Like a ram. Like on the, 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 the football Dodge ram. The Dodge ram. The Dodge ram. And it, it looked at Brandon and looked like Satan. It looked so <laughs> evil. And Aren't their, pup their pupils sideways? They're like something. I don't know. They're, they're like, like snakes or something. Like a snake really? Eye. They're like they're evil looking. It was pretty hot out there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it looked at you and I was like, oh, I'm going to fucking get this thing if it comes. And I was... I, and I was going to tell you, don't puss out if it comes getting you because it's going to take two of us to bring it down. <laughs> because in that situation, it's fight or flight. You either, either No, just, there's no flight. If no, you don't I mean, fight, that thing's going to kill you. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, you can't get in trouble for killing a ram, right? No, it's not if it attacks you. If yeah. you bothered it in its natural environment, though, and cause it to defend itself. Yeah, but if Who, it's, who's going to get us the ram police? <laughs> <laughs> no, Probably the no. ranger. The ranger who was coming. Yeah. I'm sure you'd get away fine. Yeah. Yeah. But its blood would be on your hands for the rest of your life. Yeah. I, I would put it in Nick's truck and cook it. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it on the Forget hot tournament rock. of the kings tonight. <laughs> so that ram was awesome. It was. It was like sitting there. It looked like it wanted to run away. But it turned its head to run, but it was just panting so heavily, it didn't want to go anywhere. Probably because yeah. it was so hot. Yeah. Like, listen, dude, we'll take you to the visitor center back there. When we came back around, it was gone. Yeah. yeah. So we went up the way some more, went to another destination. This is where we got out, and this is where I really wanted to explore. There was just, like, paths was so everywhere. Cool. There was rocks everywhere. Was it the rainbow something? Yeah. We, there was, like, yellow ones mm -hmm. in addition to the red. And uh, I'm sitting there like, man, I want to go. We walked, you know, a good 
maybe this is where the sand was, right? The three hundred like about desert. three hundred yards, about a football field length from the truck, and you know there's uh, paw like paw prints in the sand, slithery tails in the sand, like it was from a lizard or something. And uh, of course, Aaron's over there going further and further away. He goes like three football fields out. He, he's got uh, he's Chevy chasing it, yeah. like in uh, <laughs> vacation when he's got the shirt on his head. Yeah. And but he, in um, worst case scenario, the board game, if it says you're trapped in the desert, you have to put your shirt on your head. Yeah, that's what Aaron told me. But um, yeah, he was out there. I was like, man, I want to go out there so bad, but it's just too hot. I don't want to get sunstroke. I was already feeling it. So. Uh, Aaron found like this huge rock that just crumbled when he threw it down the chasm. I wanted to see it, but I didn't. Yeah, I was going primal out there. <laughs> I know, what'd you say? It was like, makes you feel like a man or something? Yeah, I was just picking up rocks and just throwing them, breaking them. Of course, they're made out of dirt, so it was not big of an achievement. But. So after that, we started heading back. No. no. We drove up some more and we're, we're like, Nick's like, do we want to go see the white domes or the fire canyon? Oh, yeah. And you're like, fire canyon. <laughs> like, why the fuck are you telling us to go see the fire canyon? <laughs> okay, being out in 117 degree heat, why in the hell would you ever want to go see a fire canyon? Because <laughs> you, well, you're already there. You're already burning. And it's not going to be like a fire in the canyon, like an yeah. everlasting burning fire. It was like a few miles walk, right? Yeah. We, actual fire canyon, so we gave up on it. So Aaron wanted to go see the White Domes, and Brandon went to see the fire canyon. Nick made him Rochambeau. It. Of course, Brandon won. We go to the fire canyon, and it says, uh, fire canyon, two-something miles hike. And I remember at the visitor center, it says, hiking is strongly advised today. Uh, strongly not advised. Like, I'm not hiking to this thing. There's no way. Nah, uh, none of us wanted to. Yeah. Was, what so, a pretty stupid. So then, uh, I think we all would have died. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> At least I know I would have. It's possible. Uh, so we end up uh, going out. Nick wanted to see the petroglyphs. I couldn't. I like, I'm sorry, Nick. I can't go <laughs> see another attraction. I was already dead, like in the car, getting dizzy, and I know Aaron was getting a little sick. And uh, Brandon, I don't, you, I don't know if you were passing out on the front seat, <laughs> but I remember I was trying to get service, and you're like this with your hand on your, <laughs> your head on your hand, like this, just sitting there, and I'm like, and yeah, we were all baked. I was like, I don't know if you passed out. I was like, uh, I can't get service. Can you get service, Brandon? Just see if he'd answer. <laughs> And he did. He was fine. Yeah, I just had a really bad headache. And then uh, driving back, we were going to get some illegal fireworks. And we drove back to the fireworks stand, which is 11 miles out. There was a line wrapped around the whole... You know, yeah. like, oh, it was ridiculous. Yeah, uh, yeah we'll, we'll just go in and get some... We'll, we'll stop at Walmart, I think. What would we stop at Walmart for to get some face paint? Yeah, because <laughs> Aaron got this... The, Great idea, saying, why don't we paint our faces? We're sitting in the dragon section for the Tournament of Kings. We actually got our tickets and we got the dragon section. I was on cloud nine that time, that point because we just got put into dragon section, which seemed impossible. Apparently, that's what the they were going to put us in Spain, Spain. right? España. Yeah. yeah. And the lady's like, oh, we only have Spain. We're like, Spain. <laughs> Can we have the dragon section? So, like 15, seemed like 15 minutes later, she prints out her ticket. She's like, here you go, I got you guys in dragon section. I'm like, oh, this is so amazing. I wanted to hug her at that point. And then I went and threw down $20 on blackjack and won 20 bucks. Yeah. I was, I was sitting on clown dine at that point because we were going to sit in the dragon section. I've never seen the Turner Kings before, so I never, I didn't know what to expect. So, um, we, we decided to go paint our faces for the Dragon, the Tournament of Kings, to represent Dragon. We got to the Tournament of Kings, and that, that was awesome. The meal was great. Yeah, but everyone <laughs> was asking us, like, why we had our faces painted. Was I think the one, one lady was like, she realized why we did it, and it's like, I thought, why don't people do this all the time? Yeah, yeah. Because, like, you're going in the evil section. And remember, when Dragon came out, his face was painted, too, like ours. Yeah. 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 And uh, it's funny because they served us some tomato soup, which was really good. It was blood. Yeah, they, they said it was dragon's blood, and I said, 
is this from the actual dragon? <laughs> and they said, he said, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> is this guy retarded? <laughs> yes, it is, little boy. It's from the real dragon. He was upset with me because as soon as he handed the hen, like, I grabbed it, like, out of his, like, hand and just started eating the whole thing. Yeah, we they serve us dragon blood first. Tomato soup is our appetizer. And then they bring out a plate of a Cornish hen, a red potato, a lovely biscuit, and broccoli. And Aaron, as soon as the guy started to sit down Aaron's plate, Aaron just grabs it like a madman, grabs the chicken, and just starts eating it. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> and the guy was like, oh, and then he took ye old finger off or something like that. <laughs> Get your ye ye old ass over here and give me some more dragon blood. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if you could ask for seconds of the dragon. They were refilling it on the other rows. The dragon's what? Yeah. I didn't get how they were doing it. It seemed like some people were getting food later. I didn't yeah. Know. So they serve you your food, and forgot to mention, you don't eat with any utensils. You yeah. eat with your hands, which is, I would have liked it if you go to some restaurants like Rip Barbecue Joints, and at the end of the meal, they give you a wet towel to, hot wet towel, just to wipe, not like a wet nap, I'm talking actual wash rag to wipe your whole sloppy self off because I, after that my hands felt kind of icky I was dipping in my own uh, water and soda and washing yeah. them but they give you the meal you eat it with your hands you feel like a real true savage at that point and I liked it when they said let's see who could cheer which section is the greatest and you know they went throughout Spain and Hungary and France and all these other and they came to the, the dragon section and then so he says, and the winner is evil. <laughs> and we were like, yeah. Yeah, we we were on the, there's four rows. We were on the top row. As soon as they said dragon, Brandon and I and Nick and Aaron all stood up. I had like a, a tiny tank top on that was an undershirt. It's like tattered and ripped, and I didn't even care. I stood up, threw my hands up, my hairy armpits and everything. <laughs> like, dragon! And I thrusted my hands out like claws and I was like Arr! it felt <laughs> I actually felt like I was part of the dragon team and we won the we won the, the chant we won everything except for the match and how awesome was that show like, yeah. when the demonic priest came out didn't you just want to go out there and just <laughs> join him did you just feel at peace yeah I remember Aaron he mentioned that he said when the when the monks came out and the priest and they were all ominous Aaron wanted to just leave his life behind and go live with them. <laughs> <laughs> and they called the other dragons, and there were like a bunch of dragons fighting him, and there's a dragon king. It was hecka tight. Yeah. Highly recommendable. If you guys go to Vegas, go see Tournament Kings at Excalibur. Tell them Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia sent you. You've got to be in the right frame of mind. Be prepared to root for evil and embrace your evil side, <laughs> and you'll have a if lot they, of fun. If they try to sit you in the France section or Spain, Say no. Treasure hunting said I need to sit with the dragon section. And you give them this code word, nostalgia, and then they'll they'll, <laughs> they'll they have reserved spots just for the dragon section. Because none of those countries went either. No, it's a fi the fairy prince. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's a uh, King Arthur's son. Yeah. 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 Totally undeserving. <laughs> Got it because his dad. Spoiled, up. spoiled little ragamuffin, rat fink. And that, that King Arthur was such a disgrace in the King Arthur. He, from, was, he was overweight. And from <laughs> King Arthur and the Knights of Justice, remember that cartoon? Oh, oh. You know, I mean, I've got the whole series on DVD. <laughs> he was nothing like that King Arthur. I was like, come on. Would Excalibur be my strength? Yep. yep. They were a high school football team, right? Yep. Yeah. His name was Arthur King. And they said... Oh, you're King Arthur. It's like, no, I'm Arthur King. <laughs> Don't you hate it when that happens? <laughs> uh, we got to do top 80s cartoon. Yeah. The Double Dragon. Yeah. Well, even though I think it was 90s, but... The Double Dragon was 90s. So what did we do? Uh, was that was what, Saturday or Sunday night? That was Sunday, huh? Yeah. We went to the hot tub. You wanted to stay there and jack off in the hotel room by yourself. No, that's not it. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't feeling good at all. Yeah, we're, Nick and Aaron and I were like... Watch, we're going to come back and be like, oh, there's a ghost in here. <laughs> no, uh, no, it was just, something happened. Didn't, wasn't I, it wasn't, oh, my knee was hurting, remember? I hurt my knee. That's a perfect town to go in a hot tub. 
and uh, twisted my ankle. Yeah, the chlorine will hurt my knee. Yeah, you scraped it. No, I did more than scrape it. It's still a little scraped up. It's weird. Whenever I go in a pool or something that has too much chlorine, it hurts when I pee. Hmm. No one else has ever told me they had that problem. Yeah, yeah I remember we were talking about. It. I was like, no, that's never happened to me. Yeah. I I pee. I pee in pools all the time, day, <laughs> and it's like, no. I don't know if my penis has gills or something, and it gets chlorine in it. <laughs> it's got it. a mind of its own. <laughs> Good thing when it's we go breathing sc- underwater. <laughs> Good thing uh, when we go scuba diving and our oxygen runs out. I know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's the little hole thing. <laughs> like one of those worms off of Dune. <laughs> Sandworm. The, uh, yeah. the or Beetlejuice. Water world. With Kevin Costner's gill of like vagina. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we went on the hot tub and relaxed, and it was nice. Nick and Aaron were having a hearty debate, and I was just listening to the banter going back and forth. <laughs> it was about what, uh, freedom of the individual and the right of the individual to be an asshole. Yeah. And I was saying that they shouldn't have that right, mm-hmm. and he was saying they should. Yeah, pretty interesting. I, I went in and out of the hot tub, went over to the kiddie pool. Felt like a creep in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's only like two feet high, and like there's all these little kids running around. I was like, oh. You felt like a creep. Uh, the night after that, I was over there taking pictures of you know all the little waterfalls and stuff, and I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm like, gonna think I'm t- taking pictures of a kid. With little children. Yeah. What is that one movie yeah. called with Jackie Earl Haley? Yeah. Um. So did we do anything else that night? No? The, we, the hot tub night? We ordered a pizza. Oh, is that when we ordered pizza? Yeah. This Was was this Saturday or Sunday? Uh, Sunday. Sunday night. Okay. So I remember I had to depart the next day and I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, we tried to pack as much as we could in the two days. Yeah. And, um, yeah, Brandon and I, I don't know why, but we like to order pizza and have it delivered to us when we stay at hotels. Yep. We just like to try the different pizza places around. This one was called Little Italy. Pretty good. I actually enjoyed the pepperoni more than I enjoyed the Hawaiian. Yeah, which is sad. <coughs> I really like Hawaiian, but that just put it to shame. Hawaiian's a harder pizza to do, right? It is. Pepperoni's like the standby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So Monday night, I just remember feeling like Brad has to go on his Greyhound for 10 hours. That heck of sucks. Right. I was like, um, when we dropped him off, it was like a mom dropping their kid off to camp. I was like, I hope he's going to be okay. And it's like, I'm sure he'll call. Yeah, yeah, but <clears throat> I told you about the crazy guy, right? No, I, I you didn't tell me any stories about the Greyhound because I wanted to save it for the podcast. Okay. <laughs> so I get there, right? And I, I arrive like uh, how Sarah Jessica Parker must felt when she first entered New York City. <laughs> in <Thank second>. <laughs> so gay. So many dicks, a little time. <laughs> I, I, I felt the way that Arnold Schwarzenegger arrived in first arrived in Terminator when he was just alone in the world. I, I'm trying to think of a better record. Kyle Reese. <laughs> alone and ready to kill. Kyle Reese when he went back in time. Okay. So I felt alone, vulnerable, and I'll, I've never done this before. And whenever I don't do anything for the first time, it frightens me. I don't know why. Pretty normal. Okay. So I get there, and I'm sta- I guess I'm standing in the right line to get my ticket because I did will call. And the lady asked for my password. And I was like, I, I had to select a password? Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, you put in a password for when you pick up your ticket. And I was trying to remember it. I was like, is it Nintendo? She said, no. Is it Karen? I'm like, no. She's like, oh, is it 37? Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> so that was my password. I, I, I completely forgot I had to do a password. So I'm standing there. I'm like, so what do I do here? I don't know what to do. She's like, just stand over there. They'll call your section and you'll board. I was like, okay. So I'm sitting there, there's this guy with a heck of long hair, looked like Weird Al Yankovic, except that without the glasses, and he just looked crazy, and he's like sitting there going back and forth. Man, fuck you, man. What do you want? You want a piece of me? He's like telling everybody off. He's telling off this old Asian lady. <laughs> like, you want the old Asian lady? He, apparently he was nuts. So we just sitting there, just walking back and forth, pacing. Like, man, all you guys, you guys are going to die. Man, you guys are, <laughs> you guys are fucked. Is, is he uh, in line to board your guys' yes? <laughs> and Good seat, mate. And if, if worst came to worst, I know I would have put my hero hat on and went and got him. But it was like, who does this usually? Apparently someone who's crazy. So all of a sudden they say, okay, seats one through eight or sections one through eight. 
get in your line. So we all get in our line. What section are you? Uh, eight. So I got first boarding, so which is cool. I got the front seat, even though it says for handicap. <laughs> <laughs> I get the front. Uh, so I get I get I get in line. People are starting to line up behind me. So I'm sitting there and I'm keeping an eye on, on the guy. So all of a sudden he he sits down next to his big bag. He pulls out a big ass hammer and puts <laughs> it on his bag. <laughs> and he starts looking at people. He says, "What? <laughs> what?" <laughs> and so finally, this guy who it's like a little nerdy guy, overweight, middle aged, like balding, nerdy Brian? guy. Oh. No, not Brian. Like <laughs> Rob. Oh, okay. That he was like standing behind me like blowing in his hair. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy finally had enough of it. As soon as he sees the hammer come out, he goes over and tells the security guard. And the security guy he's like a uh Wait, wait. Who was blowing in whose hair? The crazy guy was blowing in the Nerds are okay. <laughs> that guy really didn't want to get on that bus. <laughs> he really didn't want to get on that bus. Someone told him he had to buy a ticket. He was trying to whatever he could do. Not get on. The guy sees the hammer, and the nerd guy, and he goes over to the security guard to tell the security guy he's like five foot seven, very strong Mexican presence, like a Danny Trejo. <laughs> kind of like a young Danny Trejo. Ray Mysterio. <laughs> a young Danny Trejo comes over and says, like, man, what the fuck are you doing with that hammer? <laughs> he's like 5'7", he's shorter than me, and you could tell he could fuck someone up. He's like, what are you doing with the hammer? Get up. And so they, they both get up, and he's like, he, he grabs the, the security guard grabs the hammer, and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? Are you crazy? <laughs> and so he's like, get out of here. Let's go. We're going on a walk. And then so everyone starts clapping, and... The, they're walking out <laughs> the long corridor. It's like a back, the back way, and all of a sudden I see the crazy guy reach back behind him, like dig in his back pants. I'm like, oh, he's fucking not a gun. <laughs> he's gonna shoot the young Danny Trejo. <laughs> and but he he didn't pull anything out. I was like, boy, if he had a gun, he probably would have been shooting people. But then I was like, well, now I get to get on the bus. So what else is gonna happen? Um. Thursday night, I went out with Mike. And oh, yeah, you had an adventure that kind night. Kind of a crazy night. We went to, he was there with his family who are all enjoy um, drinking and going out. So uh, Brandon and Nick weren't really too keen on that scene, so I went out. And, uh, me, uh, Mike, and his family were all cl- hopping through different clubs, played some uh, beer pong. Mm-hmm. And then this old guy who was pretty wasted at this point. He was, of, he was with you guys, right? He was with us, yeah. He, um, he said, this isn't the real Vegas. I need to show you guys old Vegas. That's the real Vegas. So we got in this cabin. And, uh, and you were like, we've got to go see this, right? You were yeah, like, there's yeah, no yeah. way we're not seeing this. Yeah. <laughs> I was under the influence at the time. Pretty heavily under the influence because we played a couple games of beer pong. And then we had a, a Mai Tai and another drink. Is this some stranger? No, no. no he was like related to uh, okay. Lindsay. Okay. Um, so me, the old guy, Mike, uh, Lindsay's sister's boyfriend, and a girl who was a relative too, uh, got in a cab, and we went to downtown Vegas. And let me tell you, it was the seedy as shit. <laughs> <laughs> the real Vegas. Yeah, it was more like Reno. <laughs> so we get out, we go in this casino. Was it busy at all? Yeah, it was no. a lot of, it was like, at this one, it was like 2.30 in the morning. Right away, me and Mike look at each other, and we're like, we are really fucked up. We need to sober up, like, right away, because things are going to get sketchy. So we we went straight to this restaurant in the casino, and I got a cheesesteak, and he got toast. <laughs> and uh, we drank all this water, and we got, got our stuff together. Hey, you know how to, like, a deep conversation about, like, life and all this kind of stuff. And then we were like, uh, we got to gather everyone up and get the hell out of here. So we found our three other people. We got back in the cab. Um, we we got back to the casino. Luckily, that all went off without incident. The, the older guy wanted to stay in Old Vegas. And wait, we hadn't seen everything yet. You uh, you skipped over a pretty important part of that story. What? Um, he was going to teach you guys something. No, no, wait, that's no one at that part. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So we got back to the casino, and then we got out. It was like three thirty in the morning, and then the older guy said, "I'm going to need to teach you guys how to play craps." So we went to the craps table. It turned out he didn't know how to play craps at all. <laughs> he was really drunk. So he had to keep asking questions about playing craps. And then the girl, we wanted to make sure she got safely to the room. So we saw her walk to the elevator. But apparently, she didn't really go on the elevator. She actually left, hopped in a cab, and went to another nightclub. And nobody saw her again until the next morning. 
people were freaking out. Uh, the old guy was losing a ton of money. He didn't know how to play craps. Me and Mike were like, all right, we're going to bed. And then the other guy we were with, when he went back up to his room, he fell coming into his room and busted open his face and had to uh, get a bunch of stitches and go to the hospital the next day. The older guy didn't come out of his room till late in the day that day, and he said he lost $4,000 playing craps. <laughs> <laughs> so be careful when you're having fun in Vegas oh man yeah so do you have any cool stories for San Diego yeah we went to the state fair we were going to Adam I thought they had the state fair in, Cal in Sacramento county fair same thing big as the state fair uh, they were going to have Adam Lambert perform that night we were going to stay for that but Karen was not doing it with her tailbone we uh, tried a whole bunch of different foods we tried uh, first we were going to try a gyro, but because of like two dollar a day where you pay two dollars to get a sample of something, but that ended up five and we got there at five, so. Those things make me sick. The really? Gyro, so yeah. With the uh, tzatziki sauce? The sauce. Yeah. I can't do the it. cucumber sauce? Not that. It's like a, some kind of like goat uh, sauce or something. Yeah, I, I can't eat those ones. Yeah. Uh, but then we went and got... <clears throat> A artichoke stick, which is a bunch of deep fried artichokes on one long kebab. Hella good. Mm -hmm. they, what they do is they give you at one of those boats like we used to get in high school that they put the french fries in. So they fill the whole bottom up with ranch and just put your thing in there. <laughs> and it's like this long. Good. It's like 13 inches of artichoke heart goodness. Uh, Karen, oh, do they just pop in your mouth too? Like you just explode with cheeses? Yep. Yeah, there's this uh, cheese take place <clears throat> by my house, right? Five minutes away, that serves uh, deep fried artichoke hearts, and when you bite into it, it just explodes. Yeah, yeah they're, they're good. <coughs> but they had them all on the long stick, mm -hmm. so you got to peel them off of you. I let the kids each pick out one item that they wanted. Logan got this big old donut, not that impressive. Sam got a deep fried Snickers, which was good because I did dad tax. I yeah. sampled everything. Of course, you paid for it. And then I did, um, then we got a, um, for Jordan, he wanted a. Uh, fritter cake. What are those things called? Funnel cake with strawberry mm -hmm. and whipped cream. It's good too. But they each got a sample of each other's too. Sam went over to Jordan's, put both of his hands on the funnel cake and ripped it in half and started eating it. I was like, Sam, you're getting all in Jordan's stuff. But they had good food. Uh, the last thing I wanted to, the last food item I got was something, it was like deep fried potatoes. What it was, they, they cut potatoes. French fries? No. Do <laughs> 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 they cook them in oil, perhaps? <laughs> I guess, but it's like they took a russet potato and cut it lengthwise, like tempura, but instead of tempura, they did it deep fried, so the big old potato thing, mm -hmm. and they you could get them with um, cheese and bacon, sour cream, chai, whatever. We got sour cream and bacon, and it, those were heavy good. We all shared those. And um, then we went on the carousel, which sounded like a great idea. You mean the uh, Ferris wheel? Ferris wheel, carousel, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Vertical, horizontal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, on the Ferris wheel. And Jenny said you could see the ocean from it, so it sounded cool. So I started going up, and I immediately got scared because I looked <laughs> down. I shouldn't have looked down. But then I saw the ocean, and it was fine. We went on like three times. And then we started going the other way, and I started getting freaked out because I didn't know they go the other way. Jordan, who was in another car, was hanging on to the pole with the like, <laughs> It wasn't like when that rocked back and forth, a seat, it was like a round thing. So that was cool. Um, didn't stay for Adam Lambert. On Thurs on Wednesday, we were going to go to San Diego and go to those old uh, video game shops, but we just weren't feeling like it. Mm -hmm. We wanted a rest day, so we actually went to Pachanga Indian Casino. Uh, one. $160 there with 80 on blackjack and 80 on slots. Uh, so that was cool. Didn't, I didn't even imagine winning anything. You could win anything on slots, but if you just pay a little bit at a time, you get lucky, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Then on Thursday was probably my favorite day. We actually went to this place off of Carlsbad. It's an ocean, uh, ocean city, and it's Pacific Coast Grill, which is you sit on the patio and overlook the ocean. So me and Karen ate uh, dinner up there, and the kids were down playing in the sand. But they had this uh, burger I got, which I got it cooked rare, as a filet mignon burger. It was so good, and it was so bloody, and it was so juicy. 
And then they had a um, yellow t yellowfin tartar that they chopped up sashimi yellowtail, put it on a press of like guacamole on the bottom, mango and yellow tint yellowfin, and then they had wonton you could eat it with. Oh, it's like a good too. Mm. And Karen got the sautéed sea bass, which mm. was good. I think I posted those on my Facebook page. If I didn't, I probably will soon. But yeah, it, that's what we did for the fourth. We were going to stay in the ocean and watch the fireworks, but it was getting late. We didn't. We ended up leaving on Friday, so we could rest on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we actually uh, went to a, some pretty uh, impressive buffets out there. Uh, Nick and I are really into buffets, and you know there's this one out there called Va Chanel in Caesar's Palace, which I thought was only twenty nine ninety nine. Uh, when we get there, the, it said what fifty fifty dollars or something what? like forty six. Yeah, I did take my leave. <laughs> yeah, and got some nachos on the strip <laughs> that were really scrumptious, right? No, they sucked. They were <laughs> actually awful. Yeah, so and it was a really hot day, so the uh, cream cheese. Uh, melted right, right away. Uh, not cream, cream cheese. Not so sour sorry. cream, sorry. Uh, but that Bachanel restaurant was all right. I wouldn't go back there. Uh, they had some pretty good sliders and they had veal. Uh, you know, they had some pretty good sushi, but I wouldn't go back there. I would go back to the the village. It's the uh, buffet in the Rio. Uh, pretty pricey too, $45. But Nick and I stood in line for the player's card which took five dollars off so that had all you could eat lobster tail you had so many like lobster tail like lobster tail like main lobster lobster, or lobster? I, I don't know it was lobster and we yeah uh, spice market buffet is located in uh, planet hollywood huge line it's two hours <laughs> yeah it was two hours we waited two hours in line uh so we get in line we're like man and so we get to the front of the line that was the line just to get to the escalator to get down to the buffet. <laughs> to get to the buffet line. There was another line before you get into the buffet. What was it? And like you had to wait for people to leave the table. What was so special about it? Nothing. No. <laughs> they offered like Middle Eastern food. That was the only thing that was different from a normal one. Yeah. So you stood in line to get to the escalator. You took the escalator down to get into another line that wrapped around. Once you paid, you got into another line to wait to be seated. But here was the rub. Like, with Middle Eastern food, you're not going to be able to eat that much because you know if you eat too much Middle Eastern food, which you're not used to, you're going to pay for it. Yeah. So, yeah. Sushi there sucked. I was very unimpressed with it. I didn't even try their sushi. It didn't, just didn't look good. Yeah. But uh, it was it was b better than the Excalibur buffet we went to that night, Saturday night. Yeah. We went to the Excalibur buffet, and it was way better. Uh, yeah, that buffet was lame, man. Yeah. They were like, well, why did we go to this one? Probably because we were there. Yeah, that's the only reason. Yeah. Um, so, do you have anything else to add for Vegas? Uh, that's about it. It's a great time. Yeah, it's fun. So, the, the weight challenge, we're going into our weight challenge this week. Um, I'm down to 343. Uh, down two pounds from last time I reported. I was actually down to 341 before I went on vacation. But then the vacation happened, I brought, brought me back up to 48. So now I'm back on track down to 43. Hopefully by next week I'll be under 40. And uh, some righteous food that I ate this week, I went to Black Angus, had their potato soup. Logan, do you want to say oh. hi? Hi. This is Logan, aka Wind. We're recording at my house and he's ventured out sick of playing with his brothers because they're cheating and beating him. What's your name? Logan. Logan what? Bartholomew. What grade are you going into? Second. How old are you? Six. What's your favorite movie? The Ticket Rim. Okay, cool. Uh, so I actually went and got a Maui Zowie pizza. Oh, you jerk! The so Maui Zowie is the best Hawaiian pizza anyone could, even pizza available. Uh, and I got partners onto it, half pass, so they're doughy. <laughs> I thought I'd do something inappropriate, but Logan's sitting right there. Um, did you get pan pizza? No, no I got I got original. Oh. I don't like the thick crust. Uh, pizza Hut pan pizza is cool, but too too much. I was trying to hold back a little bit. 
the, for those of you who don't know, Round Table makes this awesome pizza called the Maui Zowie. It's got a spicy Polynesian sauce. It's a sweet sauce. Are you mouth watering over there? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, pineapple, bacon, ham, red onions, tomatoes, green onions, and cheese. It's pure awesomeness on a pizza. Logan actually ate it. He doesn't like spicy food, but he ate it. Was it good? That's good. Um, yeah, so for my weight challenge, I did also get, I'm up to 305. Uh, I was down at 301 or 302 last time I reported, but um, I'm actually forcing my wife to <laughs> act, uh, get into the gym and eating right with me, and she said she's tired of being uncomfortable and fluffy, and I told her there's only one way to, to work that out. Well, there's two ways. One just costs a whole lot more than the other. Yeah. So, uh, why? What was your other way? Cardio. You know that doesn't burn that much calories. I right? take a lot of cardio. <laughs> it depends yeah. on what you guys are doing. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what I'm going to do actually when I get home today is um, set up a meal plan, uh, set up a grocery list, and go shopping. And throw all the uh, kids' junk food out of the out of the way, so I'm not tempted on eating it. Mm. And uh, she even even the other night she laid down. She's like, "Ooh, even though you haven't been to the gym in two weeks, you're you're still pretty hard, like around your arms and stuff." And I was like, "Yeah, I know." And I flexed, and she's like, "You should have at least said thank you for the compliment." And I was like, "Oh, I'm still hard." So in more than one way. <laughs> Um, yeah, so have, have we, this, this week for our uh, question, I know we kind of slacked off and we forgot about giving a trivia question out there. Um, this week's trivia question is we're going to give away a signed copy of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for Nintendo, as well as a $10 gift card. And it does work, right? It works? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I tested it. Yeah. yeah, so what we're going to do is, why don't you go ahead and post who your favorite number one video game character is of all time uh, we'll let it go for we'll let it go for a week uh, we'll, whoever posted will go in and put their name in a hat and we'll draw it uh, and that person will get the copy of the Ninja Turtles as well as a gift card you could post it on Facebook or Twitter how does the hashtag work like if they do hashtag <laughs> <laughs> do you do Twitter? Have to do some nah. Twitter. Oh. okay so um, yeah just you know at treasure hunting for nostalgia, um, favorite video game character hashtag. We're st we're still working out this Twitter. We're not really big on it yet. Um, so you know, at, well, you, do you know Logan? You're sitting over there smiling like you know what you're talking about. Like look at it. He's making a fool of himself <laughs> trying to talk about this Twitter. So um, yeah, at treasure hunting for nostalgia. Uh, you know your favorite video game character. All right, well, that does it for this week's episode of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. Aaron. Happy hunting.